It's another episode of the Locked On Coyotes podcast. We go through player reviews. We go through one more key player for the Arizona Coyotes. We're talking Travis Boyd. How did he impress us? What does he got to do more? And how does he fit into the Coyotes rebuild? All on today's episode of Locked On Coyotes. Your Locked On Coyotes, your daily podcast on the Arizona Coyotes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Robin Leonio. That's Carl Pavlik right beside me. On today's episode of Locked On Coyotes, before we get started, I want to thank everyone for making Locked On Coyotes your first listen every day. We are available everywhere you get your podcasts and are absolutely free to everybody to listen and watch. That means we'll never, ever have a paywall. But in today's episode, we are going through even more of our player reviews. We are finally kind of like rounding out our key players. That players will be coming later. But we got we got the rounding out on this one. We are talking Travis Boyd, a surprising one to say the least, Carl. Oh yeah, I don't think either of us expected Travis Boyd to be one of the key players um, for the Coyotes this season. Uh, I don't think. Any of us expected him to finish fourth in goal scored. Uh, although, if you look at his history, if that had happened based off our predictions, it would have been a very dire season for the Coyotes. Uh, but he surprised us. He is, I think, more so than any other player Bill Armstrong acquired, other than maybe you know Gostas Baron and, and Strowman. So, of all the forwards, he is the player who best like kind of epitomize the you know make the most of your opportunity 17 goals three just shy of a 20 goal season um that tells you that tells you a lot too and that's in 74 games played so like we talked about 20 goal scorers for the Arizona Coyotes and I think back to maybe like maybe what we're talking about in the in the preseason and we're just like we weren't even we were wondering if there were going to be any 20 goal scorers for the Arizona yeah. Coyotes and you end up getting three and almost another one yeah and I think more impressive than just the actual goal scored Travis Boyd's like previous high like amount of goals in a season like was five in his like full first full rookie year with the Washington Capitals he had five goals 15 assists that was his previous high. He finished with 17 goals and 18 assists. Like, just blowing that out of the water. Yeah, which is absolutely absolutely amazing. And it goes along with the uh, with the theme that we talk about with a lot of these players for the key player um, for key players is coming out with something to prove, right? Because he was he just signed a what a freaking one year contract. We're at the at at the minimum at seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars and um and you know he impressed enough that more a little over uh halfway through the season, Bill Armstrong was like, Hey, we like what you're doing, we'll sign you the two more years. Yep. And I mean, let's let's be real, he kinda ended up the de facto number one center for the Coyotes. He was, you know, he had some phenomenal chemistry with uh, Clayton Keller and Nick Schmaltz. He centered that line for most of the season. Like, and if you're playing with those two, you're going to get, you know, points. You're going to get goals. But, yeah, you know, and you actually mean, like, got to. You, you have to have good chemistry with that line. That's the most important yeah. part, and, you know. Um, cause there, you can have two, you know, really good players, but your third, you know, your center is terrible and you know, it just, and it just makes the other two players look bad. But in this yeah. case, they complemented each other so well. And again, like you said, he was the de facto first center, which to us was, you know, head scratching. Cause we're like, wait, Travis Boyd is the number one center. 
Like, in <laughs> what world is Travis Boyd the number one center? And then, and that, that's what we're talking about too. With you know, with some of our other guests that we've had on, when we talked about other players and you know who they played with, and we mentioned Travis Boyd. And they, you know, it made sense because who else do you put on there? Obviously, you don't put Barrett Hayton at the first center because he's too young, he's not experienced enough, he's still got more to prove, and to have him, you know, get the freaking, you know, stress of the one C, I don't think so. I will say you don't put Barrett Hayton at number one center yet. Uh, yes, exactly. May- maybe midway through next season, maybe the season after, maybe soon. But, like, yeah, during this year, absolutely uh, the team made the right call and not putting Barrett Hayton there. And, yeah, that was, that was pretty much all. Like, that that last-minute trading of Christian Dvorak, I was just kind of like, huh, like, who are the Coyotes going to play at center? And, I mean, Travis Boyd just kind of worked out best. Uh, I did think Alex Galchenia looked pretty good in some of the few instances, especially, like, when uh, Boyd was injured, but you know, that was kind of it. Yeah, it was definitely um, an interesting way to to to, to uh, take a look at at, at all that. Um, and I do have to credit the coaches for figuring that out, right? For mm-hmm. you know, for figuring out that lines. And again, that's going to be a discussion for a, that we'll have a full episode on. We'll discuss coaching. But I, we have to definitely you know, mention at least a little bit when talking about what we liked from Chavis Ford because they put him there for a reason. Um, and he impressed by, st- by, st- by proving that he stayed up there. Yeah. Yeah. He was like the, the veteran presence. Uh, you know, he's not too much older. He's only 28 years old. But he definitely like has an experience that, you know, Keller and Schmoltz have been playing a long time and they've been playing for the Coyotes. So that just makes it seem like it's been longer. But I, I think Boyd definitely brought something to that line. Like there's a reason why you couldn't just substitute in any player. Like Boyd seemed to click and he definitely had great chemistry with it too. Plus um, I guess to kind of round things out and talking about what we, what, what we're impressed from him, let's go ahead and point out another thing. Um, and that is when, you know, Clayton Keller goes out with an injury, um, Travis board stays in the top line, um, as, as, you know, as, as the center and in the last, what, three games, four games, he gets a goal each game and you're just like, and, and the game winning goal in like two of them, you're just like, dude, what are you doing? (laughs) Yep. Uh, three goals, three games, two game winning goals. Uh, so he definitely finished strong, um, like the like a lot of Coyotes did. He was there, like at the very end. It was very much a theme of the season, and I love to see it. It was absolutely awesome, and, and uh, a good storyline because again, you know, you know, because none of us would have said would have expected to say that come this last preseason. So it was definitely a uh, a nice thing to see from Travis Board, but. We talked highlights, so we're gonna in a little bit. We are gonna discuss things that we wish he saw from um, from this last season. Before we get into any of that, though, Carl has a word he'd like to share. So, I have a confession, and that's I love brownies. But you know what I like even more than brownies? The brownie batter. Sometimes when I'm making brownies, I like leave a bunch in the bowl. I know you're not supposed to. But, you know, you want to sneak a peek sometime. You want to just have some. But what I want you to do is imagine that instead of licking the beater or a spatula, you could have that in a Bilt Bar Puff. And you can because Bilt has a new creation, and this one is better than ever. The Brownie Batter Puff. You heard me right. It's the puff that takes protein to a whole new level, and they're available right now on Bilt.com. Most built bars only have 140 calories, 17 grams of protein, and 7 grams of sugar. That is a lot less than if you were to make a batch of brownies and eat the batter. So it's definitely the healthier option. Plus, you're not risking, you know, raw egg, raw flour, avoiding all of that. You get a nice marshmallowy flavor. What I want you to do is go to built.com, 
and use the promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. So now, Greg here on Locked On Coyotes, let's get to what we wish we saw more of from Travis Boyd. Um, and, I mean, I'm not sure what, how much I can say, Carl, because there were le- little expectations to start. <laughs> yeah. He is definitely a player where we definitely underestimated him going into the season, and he overperformed. But that does kind of mean that he is going to have expectations going into mm-hmm. this next year. Uh, I would like to see him like a little bit more defensively like responsible. I think just kind of in that role, like being on that top line, like uh, he could do a lot to make up for some of the, you know, mistakes that happen when Keller or Schmaltz are playing up, like do the cleanup work. And I think he did, you know, fine this year. I'd like to see him improve in that area. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. Um, And then, and it's just building off of that, right? Like, and that just goes from this last season to you know what you know this next season is going to be because um, that's how that, you know that's how it goes. You just want him to see, you know, build off of having a good year and um, and working on those little things, right? Because he has to continue to improve uh, to to uh, improve and to continue to prove that he belongs. As a as a top line forward for the years, as a top six forward at the very least for the years and the Coyotes, it's the prove he belongs there. Um, and you, you don't have to say that for very many players. Very many players are just like that that they're going to be up there almost no matter what. Obviously, you know, falling in a catastrophe. Yeah, Ward is one of those players where like he has to stay this way. I feel to stay up there. Yeah, Uh, Boyd was never a player who was a top-line player before coming to the Arizona Coyotes. And he could very easily find himself in a different spot. Um, And I think we would likely see his production drop if that was the case. I think a lot of his goals did come from playing on a line with Keller and Schmaltz. And, you know, like we mentioned up top, like, credit to him for having the chemistry and for doing the work, but he's got to keep doing the work. Um, Luckily... As I said, he's pretty young. He's 28. Uh, so prime, kind of later end of the prime, but like, you know, he's not late 30s. We're not going to have to worry about like a sudden drop in quality. Uh, I think he just kind of needs to continue to, you know, keep doing what he was doing. Plus, speaking of chemistry, um, there are a couple times, you know, to take an account for injury. And I'm not talking about Keller or Schmaltz injury. I'm talking about, you know, injury to, to the anywhere else in the team where a center is needed to be slotted there and, you know, things need to be shifted around. You want to make sure that he can work, that he can be slotted anywhere. Um, yeah. Obviously, does he right now still deserve to be number one? Absolutely. But you want to make sure that, you know, you can slot him next to any winger and still perform, you know, at the same, at, you know, roughly the same level. Yeah. And I mean, it's so hard because I feel like a lot of the coyotes were unrestricted free agents, pending unrestricted free agents. Mm -hmm. Technically they're still with the team, but like there is going to be a completely different lineup and like a player like Boyd, like having some consistency. That's great. I, I love that. But If the team acquires like another center, like I could very easily see Boyd having to compete for a job. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I don't really know if he is the type of player who kind of thrives off that kind of competition. We know that there are some players who do some players who don't. Uh, I think he is the type of player who is willing to take a risk, like a chance on himself and sign with like a team like the coyotes. So I am confident that he is going to, continue to improve and kind of keep himself like worthy of the position he's in. Yeah. I think, and I think he'll, you know, um, he'll stay there. You know, I think based off what we've seen so far, right. That that's the trajectory he's going. And I guess be real based off a lot of the players who have had something to prove. um, It's going to continue to be that way. Right. 
mm-hmm. at least for a few more years, we're, that they were going to have the same theme where everyone has something to prove. Even if yeah. even if said player already proved it, they got to do it again. Yeah, and, and that's that's the thing about professional sports. Uh, you know, ultimately, it doesn't kind of matter what you did last season. Like as soon as the new season starts, new season. So you got to do it all over again. Absolutely. We still got more to get to though. On this episode of Lockdown Coyotes, we're going to discuss, you know, grades and what we're going to see from him down the, from Travis Boyd down the future. In just a moment, but first, we've got a quick word from our sponsors. So back here on Lockdown Coyotes, Robin Leonio and Carl Pavlik, we are discussing Travis Boyd on today's episode as we break down his performance with the Arizona Coyotes in his first year after signing a one-year deal worth $750,000 and has been since signed to an extension for two years at $1.75 million apiece. So he got a million-dollar raise, Carl, for each year he's back. Um, yep. Obviously, that's, that's a good sign, um, and a, um, something that he's going to be down there for the future. But before we get into any of that, though, let's get to some grades. Um, he definitely exceeded expectations, and and this in my grading system is not is like and again it's and like probably yours is the same. It's all about where that player was in terms of expectation wise, right? You know, mm-hmm. if they exceeded it or fell below it or whatever. I think because he exceeded it, I'm giving him verge, you know, B plus, A minus. Because, like, because, uh, again, we expected nothing from him. And he comes sure. out and has a career year. 35 points. Like, oh my, like, just like, we, like, well, I'm sorry, what? Especially if the arrows in the Coyotes. So just like, okay, he deserves to have a high grade here. Yeah. So which one is it going to be? Is it going to be the A minus or the B plus? I'm giving them the A minus. Okay. Okay. Um, I I feel the same way. Uh, I do. I, I still would have liked to have seen more out of him. I would have liked to see like a more complete game, but I was extremely surprised. So I'm going to go with a B plus. Um, it is definitely a player, I think, you know, if anyone could have been slotted into that role, like, anyone would have succeeded. But they couldn't. Like, Travis Boyd was the player who fit best with the Coyotes' two best players. And that says something. Uh, I don't know if he has the best game, but he is the best at that role for right now. So I am going to be impressed by that. It's a role playing. It's a role playing thing, um, and which is interesting because, like you know, normally role players are death pieces, right? Yeah. There's a reason why we're not including uh, Travis Boyd under our depth players reviews because mm-hmm. he exceeded expectations and got slotted into a spot that you know no other, like very few other players in the team can say they did, and that's again, you know, centering Clayton Keller and Nick Schmaltz. Yeah. I mean, keeping up with Clayton Keller and Nick Small, it seems like hard enough, but uh, centering it just, wow. Um, and yeah, I, I, I do think like the team probably expected Boyd to be like, you know, bottom six, like mm-hmm. maybe like a guy who you throw out there to win some faceoffs every I mean, once that's in a while. They signed him to the minimum. Yeah, they signed him to the minimum. And I I think like he definitely overperformed. I do think the fact that he got a one million dollar raise as opposed to a like three million dollar raise maybe says something about how Bill Armstrong views his, you know, long term future with the team. I don't think he is like guaranteed to be sell- centering Keller and Schmaltz next year. I think if someone like else is able to step in either Hayton or like a newly acquired player. Like that's a, he's got like kind of a precarious spot. I mean, let's put it this way. Like um, there are, there were some players. I mean, not this, not, not to say like they showed that they can easily fit that role, but there are definitely some players from Tucson who would easily want to try to at least prove that they can be up there. 
um, because like obviously it's hard because you know most road runners are going to get called up they're only third and fourth liners um but come training camp they're going to try everything right yeah um matthias michelli might be like hey guess what i worked on this and look what i can do now like that's what all, and that's what it all it is about development right and so uh like i wouldn't be i mean like i'm not saying it's it's going to happen it probably isn't but in this in, in in this day and age, you have to always be cautious. I mean, I I honestly think Barrett Hayton is like the next person like on the list. Like the perfect, and example. perfect example. Yeah. If I'm Travis Boyd, like I am making sure that I am staying ahead of Barrett Hayton this entire offseason, just because like, yeah, that's a that's a kid who could pass you up and you're like, oh, you know, you're bench, you're 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 benching, you know, three fifty. I'll go four hundred. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, make sure that you are one step ahead, and, and competition can definitely, you know, be beneficial. Uh, I I think just kind of where they're at in their careers, the fact that Hayton is much younger, Boyd is twenty eight. Uh, There's a the, reason to be to you know look over your shoulder. Yeah, your yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, it, it's kind of Shakespearean in its own way, where you're just like, yeah, your you super is like just right on the team, like you know him, like you know that that guy is gonna steal your job eventually. Like you're, you, I don't want to say he's keeping the seat warm, but I, I think that could be a very real possibility if he lets up. Yeah. I do think that he can keep, you know, keep he it. He can up. hold on to it for for. For a decent amount of time, but I, you know, I, I'm kind of with you, and like I, I do, I do firmly believe that Travis Boyd is a very rebuild piece. He's there yeah. for the rebuild, there to help, you know, piece things together as they slowly start, you know, come, ev- come and meet all together, and until the, you know the right player comes along and to fill, you know, to fill the shoes, and that's why he was only signed for two years. Right, two years yeah. at that at you know at that dollar value because that's where Bill Armstrong sees his role as, and let's be real, he probably also kind of sees it that way. He probably understands that, um, yeah. But also, you know, he also hopes to grow. And by the time he's he's done, maybe you know he's good enough, he's proved himself enough to to make the jump to another team and do the same thing. Yeah, like I said before, like his previous like career high goals was five, uh, mm-hmm. like. And he got 17 one year, like for one year, like that doesn't necessarily earn you like a massive extension. Uh, I do think that Travis Boyd is a very interesting type of player. One of the guys I always love is like veterans who specialize in one thing, like third line, like face off experts, like just like finding a niche and just doing it really, really well. And I think that's always kind of a, a great you know, transition for a player like Travis Boyd. Uh, or maybe he just stays on a line with Keller and Schmaltz and like has a 25 goal season because they have like more time together. It's just like, yeah, I don't know. Like Boyd just plays really good with Keller and Schmaltz. And here's the thing. I hope that's the case. I yeah. want to see Travis Boyd continue to prove me wrong. Like I gave him a good grade. He exceeded expectations this year, but the thing is, my expectations remain low. <laughs> yeah, because again, like, I'm, and then nothing against him, because I think he's a great, you know, like he, you know, he did, he had a great season. You know, I'm playing on the cautious side, so my expectations will remain low, and. It will be better for him because he'll like because I hope he'll continue to exceed my expectations. Yeah, I mean, what what do you think about him scoring ten goals next season? Do you think that is more likely or less likely than him getting seventeen again? Um. Ooh. I don't know. That's a good question. I had to think about yeah. that one because like, like, cause there was a decent chance that he might just play helper next year. Yeah. Right. And just set up 
both Schmaltz and Keller, who were close to 30 goal seasons. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't he go, he went to the net a fair amount. So I think a lot of his were redirections, which you know, it's fine if you're going to the net, like that takes a lot of, you know, uh, resilience to to put your body through that. Um, I, I I don't know. Like Travis Boy is a player that I am just like. I'm like you. I I hope he proves me wrong, but like just kind of looking at him, I'm like I'm not sure how. Like I'm not long, sure not how long term that he's, yeah he's there. Um, he's there to help build. But it's hard to see his long-term role if he goes in the Coyotes. Yeah, especially because you know, like, like we talked about, there is a player on the team who is ready. He's ready. <laughs> yeah, almost destined to just kind of take his spot. Um, mm-hmm. And it'll be kind of interesting to see how, like, if that happens, how Boyd responds because. Like the fact that he had three goals in the last, you know, three games, that to me says something about his character. And and again, especially without uh, playing Keller. So, mm-hmm. yep, absolutely. That tells you a lot. Anyways, though, any last thoughts you'd like to share on Travis Board before we close things off on today's episode? Uh. I I think I pretty much covered it. I just I'm wishing him the best. Uh, I know we're we were kind of critical on him, but like I loved watching Travis Boyd kind of exceed beyond our expectations. I loved being proven wrong about players. I I hope it happens again. Absolutely, I do too. I um again like um I love being proved wrong by the um by players and um in in the sense where they end up playing better than I than I expect. And I hope to see, I hope to continue to see that. Anyways, that's going to be it for today's episode of Locked On Coyotes. If you liked your heard, don't forget to leave a review, like, comment, subscribe. If you have yet to already, we're available everywhere. You get your podcast, including on YouTube. Don't forget to interact with us on social media. We're on Facebook, facebook.com slash Locked On Coyotes. On Instagram at Locked On Coyotes. On Twitter at LO underscore Coyotes. I am personally... At Robin underscore Leonio. That's Robin with the Y underscore L E A N O. Carl Pavlock is Carl Pavlock F F H. And wrap with us asking the question, we might answer them right back on a future episode of the Locked On Coyotes podcast. And as a reminder, everyone, uh, coming up this week, we got a lot more player reviews to get to. We're going to start getting into debt players, grouping them into threes, discussing um, and in, in, in giving you know quick hit grades. And thinking what we want to see from 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 a lot of these guys um, as we get ready to do that, plus more draft profiles coming up all throughout this week. So we got a lot to get to. Anyways, that's it for today. Hope you guys are staying safe. Hope you guys are staying healthy. And don't forget to howl on. <laughs>